Okay. Well, where to begin? Um, strange time for all of us. This is April the 1st, and this is not an April Fool's joke. Um, so this is 1st of April 2020. Um, very strange times all over the world. Uh, not just in the UK. Uh, and uh, particularly for me, um, you know, everyone's affected personally more than another person but you know we're all affected equally and differently um, so you may notice from where we are uh, I run a plant nursery it's quite a large plant nursery it was a wholesale plant nursery and I say was overnight the wholesale trade has evaporated uh, not surprisingly um, garden centers had to shut retail sites have to shut there's no one left to buy the plants so it's a bit of a worrying time in horticulture so what have I done? I've turned to the camera because what else can you do? Eh? You've got to, you've got to smile and hope for the best. Uh, but what I have actually done in a proactive way is we had a mail order side of the business, which I have run down uh, over the last couple of years. And then uh, as this has started, thankfully there was a website there which all the hard work was done. I think there was about 300 uh, plants listed on there, which. We've got about 150-ish here on the ground, so I've just basically been going through them the last week and updating them, and that is now live. And we are selling them on the website and via eBay, and hoping hoping to spread that out a bit further as, as uh, time goes on. So, a lot of work, as you can imagine. It's it's um uh, it's a week's work just to keep everything alive here, let alone trying to sell stuff. So you can imagine, you know, we've all got our own problems. You may hear some wheezing in the background in the silent points and that's our nursery cat which I hope as we go forward I'm going to be vlogging this uh, for, for my own sanity for if nothing else and it's a way of uh, you know getting myself out there uh, we're looking more at the retail trade and I think we're going to have to as we go forward because who knows what's going to be left at the end of this but we'll just have to wait and see it could be over in a couple of weeks and then this will be a little bit silly but if we're still here six months in then maybe it was a good idea. Now, don't worry, this isn't going to be the coronavirus diaries. That's it. We're not going to mention it again because you know, there's better things in life because we all know what's going on. We know where to look for it if we want to know about it. And I'm assuming if you're finding this video, you're trying to find something out about gardening, about horticulture, about nurseries, plant production, whatever. So we're not going to worry about any of that. We're going to focus on plants. So for that, I'm linking this to the website, so this isn't a sales pitch uh, necessarily, but at the same time it's a way of describing some of these wonderful plants we've got here crying out for a home in the ground. Um, so this could be a way of getting them that home, you know, who knows. So I've picked three plants here that we've currently got available on the website, and there's plenty of these in stock. So the first one, this is a plant uh, which I feel, personally, uh, we put on the map a little bit, in the, certainly in the southwest. Uh, this plant was never around um, a long time ago. We didn't, you know, we didn't uh, find this plant, nor did we bring it to this country or anything. But we spotted it from um, a sort of smaller nursery, and um, is my dad spotted it when we uh, back uh, back a while, about 10, 15 years ago, and thought that it had quite a lot of um, garden merit. This is Jacobinia porciflora, also known as Justitia resinii. Um, so we propagated it up and we're selling it through the garden centre chains in um, garden centre sites, sorry, throughout the southwest uh, over that time. And um, it's continued to sell. It's the one catch crop that we've grown um, continuously where we've kept high uh, stocks of it because we don't always do, we don't do sort of four or five hundreds of, of anything really. But the Jacobinia, we do try and keep between three to five hundred per season. Um, luckily, <laughs> this was the season when I only had a hundred, so thank the heavens for that. There is, there are small miracles. So uh, we've we've got plenty of these on the ground. I've got plenty of liners as well. We get into all the terminology. Don't worry if you don't know what what this is. Stay tuned to the channel. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll be going throughout the weeks t talking about all the different size plants. I mean, as I've mentioned it, let you know. Let's go for it. Nine centimeter refers to the pot size. Nine centimeter. Don't ask me why it goes from 9cm to volumetric, so we've got 9cm, 2 litre. I'm sure there's a volume of this that we could describe, but that's not how it works. So we've got 9cm plots, pots that we call liners, uh, which is based on an old name where you used to line them out for potting on. So it's a liner essentially, it's a small plant 
to be put into this plant, at uh, this size, to grow on and be an established plant. Now, uh, nine centimetre liners can be bought and uh, planted direct, depending on what the plant is. Certainly a Jacobinia could, for instance, so could this fuchsia. Um, but we, we sell in both sizes. So why I'm saying that is we've got um, we've got the Jacobinia in the nine centimetre range as well as the two litre range. And I've just picked up a two litre here, which if you want to know is actually 17 centimetres, which is the diameter across the top of the pot. So there you go. So this plant is an evergreen shrub from Brazil. Um, its nickname, uh, common name, sorry, is Firefly because of the lovely flowers and it's just getting ready to go. So um, there'll be some pictures going through now, but it's got very uh, small uh, fuchsia-like, I suppose, in one sense. Um, and it's like a few other flowers that I can't quite think of at the minute. The bud comes out yellow and then it uh, goes to orange at, at the rear of the uh, flower petals as it goes back into uh, the stem. And it opens up and it is absolutely covered in it's a, it's a lovely plant, brilliant for uh, putting a, a display on in early uh, spring. Uh, now the hardiness is being tested. I mean, when you're getting winters like sort of minus 15, which we had in the kind of 2009-2010 era, that is going to wipe out and test quite a lot of the things that uh, are said to be hardy. This one, I would say, is hardier than a French lavender. Um, should be okay with sort of minus three to five, unprotected. But um, really, you want to treat it as a kind of summer plant. Not half hardy, but slightly on the tender side, and just cover it with some fleece. Uh, give it a good mulch at the base as well, and keep it um, uh, keep a lot of feed in there, and you'll you'll get nice green foliage, and you'll get the flowers. And it's best to keep it trimmed down if you can. I mean, that's what we do. Where we've seen these grown, they're usually fanned out, and they look terrible. I mean, they're, they're sold twice the high in the pot they don't look any good at all and the flowers fall off so what we do is keep them nice and tight and get a nice rounded shrub and um, then the flowers come on there like that so that's uh, currently up on the website at the minute uh, links are in the description below so that is Jacobinia borsiflora and then next up I always like uh, I like my rare plants so um, what we've got here is Coronilla emerus so Coronilla is a rather large uh, genus and um, there's a handful of shrubs in that genus that um, are used widely in the garden. So you've got Cor Coronilla glauca, uh, which is a yellow flowered kind of pea-like shrub, I suppose. It's got the, the leaves are a bit like um, uh, peas leaves. The flowers are a little bit like peas. It is from the pea family, so it's got all that going for it. And that's uh, the yellow version. And then we've got Coronilla glauca citrina, which is the lemony sort of pale yellow version which people really love it's a great plant it's a it's a non-attaching kind of climbing shrub it's best tied into something a little bit just loosely uh, but it, it's not like a clematis it's not going to tangle and, and climb up and then we've got coronilla emerus so that's a different species and this is uh, quite different so uh, whereas the other two coronillas are evergreen this is or semi-evergreen i think they're evergreen mm. off the cuff here um, so this one is definitely deciduous, so this is a small shrub and um, it's got that bright green leaf and then you've got these masses of yellow pea flowers, it's absolutely full of it as you can see, the buds are all the way up around the inside there and they start, um, as they come out they've got that red on them and then they fade to yellow and as they open up you've got pure sort of yellow pea like flowers, really really nice. Special little plant, not widely grown. Um, and it's a cracker in the garden, it's really good, sort of front to mid border sort of um, uh, area or it could be in a corner of a, a, sort of on the corner of a bed, something like that. It's really good for an early um, display of flowers, absolutely full of it. Great for um, any early insects that are around it, it gives them some food and then it will go on um, with the lovely foliage throughout the rest of the year. So that's a good one. And then we've got, finally, we've got Choisier White Dazzler. So this is a cross uh, that was done by a uh, plant breeder, Peter Moore, and um, he's bred this one to be, I won't go into the species because it's quite complicated, so it's not Tanata, it's quite different. Now this is exceptionally hardy, like really hardy, I mean it's, it's fine down to sort of minus 20, it really has no issues with that. It's got very very fine um, palmate and, and cut leaves, evergreen leaves. So that they're, they're, they're like the fingers. Uh, it's very, very fine. Let's pull one off. Something like that. I don't know what you can see of that, but that's what I'm talking about. Very, very fine. Um, and it's masses of uh, orange blossom scented flowers. 
and they are very very strong very nice so it puts on a lovely amount of perfume in the garden for this time of year again early spring and it will have a repeat following as well a flowering as well later in the season so into the end of uh, midsummer, it can also come on again and, and give you more flowers so it's a brilliant shrub very good for um choices can get a little bit big and they can get a little bit sort of gangly and old um, this one doesn't, it stays very dense and compact and it's a lot smaller so it'll grow to about, I don't know, about, probably about a metre high and a metre spread over 10 years. So it's very good, whereas a choice of to that would probably be more like 3 to 5 metres spread and maybe a metre and a half to 2 metres tall. So it's quite a different shrub and it's really great. So all three of those are on the website as we speak, ready to go. So if you're interested, do uh, check out the links below, head on to the website and you know, feel free to purchase them. I'd be uh, very grateful. Um, as I say, this channel's just launching with this one now. I'm going to try and do one of these, at least one of these type of videos weekly, bringing to you what I think is uh, of interest. And um, all uh, the only other thing I can do is show you this wonderful place where I am. This this nursery, which is a it's a private nursery, so we're not open to the public, but I can certainly show you around. Uh, the tunnel we're in at the minute is um, it's an amazing tunnel. It's a, it's an old lean to uh, glass house so we've got a massive long brick wall along here a very old brick wall with a, um, a 19th century potting shed just behind where you are the camera that's what I came up through at the beginning so we can have a look in there we can have a look at the history where the boiler used to be we um, got a tunnel put into the wall so it's a, it's a normal tunnel that's been slanted so the main bar is, is off center and it's been put into the wall so it's very unique is what I'm trying to say. You don't see many houses like this and because of that we can grow a wide r a range of uh, plants in here that you wouldn't usually be able to get, um, you wouldn't usually be able to do without heat and we do this without heat because the wall uh, keeps quite a lot of warmth as you go through. So we'll have a look at that, we'll have a look at propagation. I am a propagator by uh, trade, that was my thing before I took the nursery off. So we've got this bench, I will do propagation demonstrations. We've got seed sowing, uh, all kinds of different cuttings, some root cuttings, uh, semi-ripe cuttings, greenwood cuttings, internodal cuttings, hardwood cuttings, everything you'd ever want to know as far as propagation is concerned. So we can have a look at that on the bench. We can do plant profiles where we've got vincas, for instance, I think we've got about 10, 15 varieties of vincas possibly. We could bring them on the bench and have a look at each one of those and their merits and see how we go on from there and I'm sure my wheezing cat when he wakes up will make an appearance as well at, at one point and uh, he is good fun he likes to give you a good headbutt so you'll be interested in seeing that I'm sure so thanks for tuning in if you have enjoyed what you've uh, seen please consider subscribing to the channel the link is below and the subscribe button is below as well head on through to the website uh, again the link is in the description and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments if you like what you've seen if there's anything you see in the videos to come that you'd like to see more of please let me know because it's uh, simple enough for me to film them and do a video on them so i'm jason champion this is champion plants and until next time thanks for tuning in and i'll see you in the next video and as i mentioned him we couldn't we couldn't leave it without him making a cameo could we life of a cat eh He's meant to be hunting, but he's found some fleece, so that's the end of that, I think.